So for the meat, I'm going to use some of these barbecue round steaks of beef. So that's a nice thickness, and you can see it doesn't have too much fat. Because uh, lots of uh, veins are fat, like you might get in a scotch fillet, won't engrave too well. Now for the lamb, I've got one of these lamb leg steaks, which has been trimmed to the fat. It's a fairly lean piece for lamb. I'm going to cut it into slices like this, so I can make a few cubes across and engraving into the end grain of the meat. Right, I'll lay out some baking paper for my meat first and then get the pieces on there. Now I'm going to mostly manually place the starting point of all the engraving that I'm going to do so I can just lay stuff out. So in the software I'm going to do my text I'm going to do it one letter at a time because I want to sort of control the placement around my meat to make sure I get everything to fit. So I'm going to use a true type font and 12 millimeters is a good height. Alright, now I don't want to engrave it around the edges. What I want to do is have it set as a bitmap. 100 dpi is fine because I want to do it scanning lines across to get a good burn. So for our bitmap, what I want to do is I want to do it low power but slow speed to kind of cook the meat across. So 10 millimeters a second, 20% power for a 50 watt, watt laser is a, a good setting. So what I'm going to do is download it to the machine so it's sitting there ready to go. Now with my laser, I'll sit so the meat is mostly at the focal point. Then what I want to do is raise it by maybe another two or three millimeters because I want it slightly off focus to just sort of spread it out a bit more. Alright, so I'll set an origin point. Okay, so you see it's, not only is it cutting a little bit into the uh, meat, but it's giving it a really nice char, which is good because that's going to retain when we go to cook. So I've just rotated the meat a little to get the final cut. But um, I've managed to fit in all the letters that I want to get with a little bit of meat to spare. So with that done, it's time to cut them up. Alright, now I'm going to try experimental technique with some sausages and we can see how well they come out. Alright, so I'll just um, carefully slice out all the letters. Okay, because we're going to want to cook the face even, once we line up the kebab, we'll just turn it face down so the word side is going to be flush. Of 
kind of drill the skewer through. Now it can fan the meat out like that. Alright, so they're all done. So I'll put these away and then tomorrow after our morning hike we'll stop in the park somewhere and find a barbecue and see how they come up at lunchtime. Okay, so the sausages I'll just put straight on as they are and we'll see we'll see how they turn out. I'm pretty optimistic that they're gonna work. Now for the kebabs, on the riding side, I'm just going to give it a little bit of salt because I don't want to uh, use any seasoning that might interfere with the pattern. So I'll just use a bit of salt and pepper to season the back side of the beef ones. And I'll add a bit of herb and some sumac for the lamb kebab. So what I'm going to do is the front face I'm just going to press it down and sear the front just until it shows up. But I'm going to do most of my cooking on the back face and let that cook all the way through. Alright, so we'll leave that. Alright, the beef kebabs come along pretty good, but the um sausages uh, didn't actually work out very good so I'll have to go back to the drawing board there so the sausages didn't really come out that well but with the kebabs okay lamb sort of works probably need to do it a bit darker but the beef comes up really good which is what I expected because I tested it on a steak the other day so there we have it personalized kebabs